So, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Dreamforce. My name is Sanjay Pradhan, and this is my colleague, Roberto Barbero. And uh, we've flown over from the UK, where we uh, work in the IoT practice there. And today's talk is aimed at architects, developers, and anyone who's interested in, in what Salesforce has in terms of platforms for IoT. So building connected products and connected solutions is a complicated business. But the starting point is your strategy. So what we're going to take a look at today is break the presentation down into three phases. First of all, looking at what it takes to build that connected strategy, you know, breaking out of the uh, breadboard and into the boardroom, if you like, and then looking at the platforms that can deliver uh, those, those solutions on the, on the Salesforce platform. And then we're going to transition into Roberto, who's going to show you a demo of IoT Cloud. And since the product is not generally available, we have to take care of the, uh, the forward-looking statement, which I'm sure you'll all get used to by the end of the, end of the week. But we're going to take a look at IoT Cloud. And if you go to the IoT cabin over on the, on the left-hand side or to the Moscone South, uh, on the app in the um, campground, there's lots more demonstrations there as well of, of, the, of all of our products. And I really urge, urge you to go there and check out uh, the information. So, as we all know, all of our customers and, and maybe yourselves are on this journey of transformation, so digital transformation, especially product companies, all sectors, but you know, specifically product companies, where we are going from a, a mechanized, effectively inert product, and as we've grown over time, we've added more connectivity, connected to the internet, and we have more capabilities of how we can take data and start to create experiences. So the next movement within, within our customers is to start to take these devices, connect them up, and then start to create experiences for our customers. And that really changes the game, because it creates that, 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 that connectivity with our, with our end users, partners, employees, whatever, and creates that engagement, which enables better productivity. According to some of the stats, the, the numbers are kind of you know, astronomic in terms of the, the market value of this. So some um, McKinsey reckon it's between a four and $11 trillion industry. So that's why you know, places like uh, Dreamforce and the IoT cabin and some of our partners are really keen to kind of work with everybody to kind of make sure we can get onto this, uh, this great journey. So scaling IoT is really kind of a three-phase thing, right? So of course, scalable platforms. We need to scale to billions of events, right? So that's a given with Salesforce. We have Force.com, we have Heroku, and we have a new platform called Thunder, and we basically can scale to, to those levels. But also scale is about how quickly you can get your products on the market, and that requires developers, okay? And for us, developers come in all shapes and sizes, all types, so from you know, expert coders right the way through to low coders and, and drag and drop, point and click. Because the two biggest you know, problems within the IoT space in terms of getting your projects online is firstly platforms, and secondly, lack of developers. They're the two kind of constraining factors. So if we can open that up to an ecosystem of developers, we're on a good roll. And then the, the net net of that is, we can then pivot in real time and start to iterate and build a new you know, build new products and build new uh, solutions quicker. So we can fail fast, try again, and start to really get into that kind of prototype into a real-life solution. So there are some fundamental things that we need to start thinking about when we start to think about strategy, because this is going to be the starting point. This is how you start to connect and move out beyond your prototypes and into a real-world solution. And there are certain pillars that we consider to be very important. The first one is defining your user engagement. So having that end in mind, what is it you're trying to do with that device? How are you going to connect it? And what's the value that it's going to bring your customers? It may sound very obvious, but actually it's not, because you can do a lot, right? You can connect devices, but if you don't have an end in mind, then really all we're doing is collecting data, which is no bad thing, but you need to drive the value for that data. So, one of the best things you have to think about, or the first things you think about, is what's that experience going to look like? So let's take an example. Kuka Robots, one of our customers on IoT Cloud, they took a robot which works in an automation factory in a car plant, and they essentially turned that into a service. So utilizing our sales cloud, service cloud, community cloud, they can take that telematic data and provide services around that. 
So they could essentially provide real-time alerts, knowledge-based articles, and actually proactively create cases from the telemetry data and the algorithms that were within, baked within the PLC controllers. And of course, to do this, you need to have connectivity. So the second part of the strategy is going to be, how are you going to connect your devices to a back end? And for that, we have our partners like Xively, PTC, and many others who specialize in this area. Because you need to take care of protocols, device authentication, authorization, all this complexity, which our partners are very skilled, and it's their business, so they're very good at doing this. And I really urge you to go and visit some of our partners in the, in the cabin, because they'll talk you through some of the uh, solutions that they've put together. The third thing is platform. The major part is platform. So where is your, where is your, uh, where is your compass, I suppose? Because at Salesforce, we have two types of platform, which is fantastic for IoT. We have Heroku, which is pretty much your developer view of, of, of build. So you have coders who use multiple languages and use a code-based approach to build out your IoT solution. And we also have IoT Cloud, which is a declarative point-and-click environment where essentially Salesforce administrators, business admins, can take these vast streams of data and start to create uh, orchestrations to drive outcomes. And we'll take a look at that within the demo. So it really comes a choice down to where do you want to start? But both of these platforms are complementary because they're from Salesforce. Behind nearly every IoT project that I've ever seen, there is an app behind that usually, either to control the device or to create that engagement with the end user. So having your IoT strategy plugging into your mobile strategy is going to be one of the things you're going to think about and start to augment device data, context data into the kind of mobile application itself to drive the value. And of course, some challenges just do not go away. Integration into your back office, especially if your connected solution is going to connect to an on-premise application. Right? So we have to start thinking about scale in terms of will our back office op applications scale to the demands that are connected service and from, the, from the UI point of view and from the service point of view, will they actually cope? And that's not just about the technology, it's also about your back office in terms of the people and the processes that, be, that are behind that. And it's often the one thing that people don't consider when they start to go down this journey. They're obsessed by connecting devices to things, but not always thinking about the value and how can we, how can we actually deliver that value at the end of it. And finally, Analytics, and I consider analytics to be something which evolves over time. Yes, yeah, sure, you're going to have analytics which, which looks at event stream as they happen in real time. But you need to take a different view of analytics. You need to have streaming. You need to look at you know, the kind of rear view mirror type of analytics and potentially predictive, predictive analytics in the future. So it starts to kind of grow over time. And so these six pillars form almost like the the fundamentals of what all of us will need to start to think about at some stage when we try to move in a project out into, into the real world. There's a lot there. So if, if in part of the strategy, if, if there's only one thing or one picture you take, it should be of this slide here, because this basically encapsulates what we just described, defining the experience, working with your partners, choosing your platform, connecting it to your app strategy, testing for scale, and then analyzing your data progressively. And this really forms the kind of the backbone of what you're going to be doing. Two things are absolutely critical. First is you've got to define and you know, have a platform that you can start to, to work with on to, 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 to execute your, your IoT journey. And from Salesforce perspective, we are not involved in that first leg of the journey, the connectivity, the network. That's the game of our partners, and they're very specialized at doing that. Where we really excel is in that journey for the customer. Because guess what? We have sales cloud, service cloud, marketing cloud. They're all about data. They're all about our customers and your customers. And this is where we make the biggest difference, where we take all this event data. Whether you code the application or you use IoT Cloud declaratively, it's all about driving that engagement at, at the front end. So hands up those who are force.com, sales cloud, or, or, or service cloud users. There you go. So, by nature, you are force.com users, right? So this is our, our platform, uh, which is you know, trusted for 17 years, three upgrades a year, and we've developed our core clouds on this platform. But also, we have Heroku. 
And Heroku is our platform as a service. So basically, this platform provides that elastic compute. So you can scale up and scale down. And you can use a multiple set of languages and services to start to build out a IoT type of solution or any other kind of connected solution or oh, any kind of mobile or back end or API based solution. But it's connected. We have connectors in place which can flow the data from Heroku into force.com and the other way. So you can really have that nice integration. And our latest platform, Thunder. I talked about scale. So this platform has been def designed for ingesting events at rapid scale and speed. So it's an eventing, it's, a, it's really a, 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 a complex event processing engine that allows you to take input stream at a rapid rate of knots and then start to orchestrate those in real time by a business user. So you can start to take those events, correlate them with, with your context data, and then really do some amazing interactions. And we'll take a look at that later. So these are our three core platforms that provide uh, the actual um, technology set that enable you to build these IoT solutions. You don't need to have all three, but you're probably going to start one way and then move into another one. So let's take a look at that in a bit more detail. What does it take to build an IoT application on Heroku? So Heroku is, an, is, a, is a platform that supports multiple languages. But also what you'll do is you spin up a, an environment, and then you pull down certain resources or certain add-ons, as we call them. And from the kind of left-hand side of the, uh, of the diagram here, we have things like Kafka, Treasure Data, and databases, effectively, which are going to be your storage point. But also, we've got partners like Zively over there who are based in the, in the IoT cabin, who have built add-ons that connect your developments into their cloud. So you can start to really quickly build out the applications. And you just saw the simulator earlier on from the previous presentation. This is the architecture for that simulator. It's Heroku plus Zively who have built the kind of the app on, uh, on uh, AngularJS. So you can see that very quickly we can start to use the languages plus the, the, the platform to really quickly accelerate that. And what does the architecture look like? Well, on the edge, we'll have a partner who provides all the authentication, the gateway, the communication into, into our core Salesforce platform. And within Heroku, we will basically create dynos with the add-ons, and then we'll basically start to process those events as they come in into your application. And then using some of the out-of-box connectors that we have within Heroku, we can start to push data into force.com and retrieve data back from force.com. So you connect the, the device through your app into Salesforce. And that provides that nice architecture for building out your solutions. As I said before, if you go over to the IoT cabin in Moscone West and Moscone South, you can get more, you can get more ideas about kind of the apps that have been built and uh, see our partner demos that are already there. So Salesforce IoT Cloud. We mentioned Heroku, and the other part of our platform is, is IoT Cloud powered by Thunder. And Thunder is our underlying technology, Lambda architecture, if you like, which provides that kind of scale and provides that kind of uh, horsepower to deal with billions of events. So this platform is really the kind of the, you know, the Rolls Royce for you know, ingesting billions of events uh, in, a, in, a, in a specific uh, use case. And it's a, it's a rapid application platform. So really, it's about a low-code environment. It's really for developers, business, for business users, administrators who want to take that event data raw from sensors and then or actually data streams of any type and then use the uh, context of the customer, the asset, the product, or whatever it may be, analytics even, and then start to create that engagement, all in the browser, all in, uh, in real time. So you start to build out your models, start to test them, and then deploy them. And it's you know, built on our platform called Thunder, which has you know, been architected to, to kind of go for billions of events per the day. One of the key, uh, I suppose, value of this particular platform is the fact that we spent a lot of time in the UI because we're almost hiding away from the underlying infrastructure of the, of the Lambda architecture. And all of the interaction happens in a really beautiful user interface where you connect the event streams, you create your business rules and your profile rules, and then start to drive your actions into Salesforce or any other platform. And this is what it looks like. So the architecture basically works on speed and scale. So we have this concept of inputs. So we take inputs from 
multiple sources, so HTTP, Azure Event Hubs, uh, FTP, and basically we can ingest that at vast scale. But the real benefit of the platform is that we can then start to use context data and wrap the event data with uh, that context. So you can have the asset information, the customer information, their SLAs, you know, if they're a good customer, if they're a bad customer, if they're a red account, all that information can come in, which allows you to build a journey. And that journey is effectively a workflow based upon a state machine, which really models an eventing architecture much more cleanly than a standard workflow. And what that means is we can then start, business users can then start to orchestrate actions into either Salesforce or anything that supports an API. So anything that has an API, you can basically just connect to it and start to drive an action. So we've got you know, examples of where we connect to Azure, Twilio, Slack, and all kinds of different demos that you'll see in, in various demonstrations dotted around Dreamforce. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Roberto, who's going to take you through the next stage of the uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Sanjay. So it's time to see a little bit of this in action. Uh, I don't know how many of you have already seen Thunder over there in the IoT cabin. I, I think that the best thing you can do after this is go over there. Both Sanjay and I will be, and we would love to show you in more uh, detail what we have there. But um, let me just go back to no, this one. Here we go. So this is the main uh, screen of, of, of Thunder. This is the state machine that Sanjay was referring before. And the use case that I'm going to show you here is just to explain to you a little bit what it is. is imagine a, a shipping container. I'm a, I'm a business that just brings in and out and transport things over the sea. Those shipping containers will have sensors. Those sensors can be temperature sensors, humidity, light, vibration, obviously GPS location or where that, that, uh, that container is. But not only the company that owns that shipping container is interested in what's going on with that shipping container. Also, the insurance company, the company that is insuring the contents of that container, will be very, very interested in knowing through all the process, through all the travels of that, of that container, what's going on over there. So what we see here is exactly that use case, where I am controlling the temperature that the contents of that shipping container has while it's on the, on the sea. And as you see here, I have, I'm, I'm uh, right now scanning 50 different containers. 39 of them are in normal temperature. 13 of them have some kind of, uh, of warning. What I need to do is to see uh, also uh, other sensors. So one of the key uh, takeouts from, from here is how easy it is without coding to change the behavior of the IoT cloud. So right now, I am not controlling the humidity of the, of the shipping container, and I need that. Instead of coding again, instead of going through, through testing, instead of, instead of using through user access and testing, what I can do is just come here and change the rules that I have on my orchestration. So I need a new state, which would be a humidity warning. And from, <laughs> I'm going to bring it just a little bit up. And from the normal state, what I'm going to do is add a new rule. I'm going to tell Thunder that if I receive container data from any of the cheaper containers that has, and again, this is just the familiar use of, uh, of, of Salesforce notation. If the container data humidity is bigger than 60%, then the state of the machine is going to give me a warning. It's going to give me a humidity warning. And I will be on that state, this new state that I created, until I receive, again, container data. And in this case, the container data, the humidity, is back below 40%. If that happens, then what I will do is go to normal. I save the new orchestration. I deploy the new orchestration. And you will see that this will change. I am adding a new state there. And immediately, Thunder is receiving again from these 50 shipping containers that I have, is receiving data. Those that have a humidity more than 60% are jumping into that warning and back into normal. So 
I didn't code anything. In 30 seconds, I changed how I want to connect to my devices. So first take, off, first take out, I can change. I, don't, I am not coding. It's just point and click. The second big thing about Thunder is how we integrate with the rest of the products of Salesforce, how you can very well integrate with your customer. Because in the end, for IoT in Salesforce, it's about being closer to your customer, understanding better what your customer is doing. <laughs> so here, in my case, my customer, which is an insurance company, in case that there is a big problem, imagine we are in the sea, there is a storm, the, the container starts to shake, starts to vibrate, and the contents are electronics, which are very, very sensitive to vibration. Well, if that happens, then the sensor will take that and will send, the, will send me a, 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 a warning. Okay? And in that case, as you can see, actually, I have one container in shock warning. I'm not only going to just say, OK, I have a problem with a container. Actually, what I want to do is open a case so someone can go and check what happened with that container. So IoT Cloud, direct integration using connectors with service, clouds in the service Cloud in this case, opens a new case, and it's showing me actually the type of container, who is the owner, which is Maersk, where is that container actually right now, because I have the GPS location of that container, and what's going on. So I can send someone and say, we have this problem here. I can send someone to check what's going on. So the case will be in a working status. And if I am fast enough, you will see that I will move from shock warning to in review. That container, someone is going to look that container. What happened? Is it OK? Is it not? The policy that I have on that container is void, because it has had these vibrations. And in the end, I will make a decision. Everything was fine. It was just a false alert. So I will close the case. Everything is fine. And the container will go back from in review to the normal state. And I will continue monitoring humidity and temperature. So again, very, very simple use case. But I wanted to show you is that how easy it is to manage <laughs> on Thunder without coding, change the behavior of the platform, how fast that is, and then the integration with all the different products, sales cloud, service cloud, app cloud, marketing cloud, you name it. I just want to show you just one more thing. Today, um, we are working over there in the IoT coming with our friends from uh, high, uh, high Robotics. And they have a pretty cool demo of the, I don't know how you have seen it, the Towers of Hanoi, where with a robotic arm and with an iPad, you can actually play the game. And the arm is placing the, uh, the tiles in one place or the other. I said, for next year, we should do that in Thunder. And they said, why don't we do it this year? Well, it was 10 minutes until I created the new orchestration. And you will see here, someone actually will walk in there. And there is a problem with the robot right now because the moving is in minus one. But someone is playing over there. And Thunder is just monitoring if the robot is moving, if it's ready to move, who has won, who has lost. And when the robot is resetting to the, st to the first state, it goes back to the ready to set up. So very, very quick way of just uh, having that integration <laughs> between the real world, between the IoT world, and your customers. Do you want to quickly show the, uh, the rules engine and how you connect to Salesforce? Yeah. So it's very simple. I have, to, I have said that it's very, very easy just to how to, how to connect. So here in the, in the containers, the way that I create a case is just following this, this wizard. There is a native connector over here. So I just have which org am I connecting to, which object am I going to change on that org. Immediately, I will see all my standard objects custom objects that I have there, if I want to create or update that object. And then, obviously, what am I feeding over there? So in this case, I'm, I am sending the container ID, the container latitude, the container longitude, the machine ID, and so on. That's all I have to do. So again, direct connectivity with any of the other clouds without a single line of code. Perfect. Let's swap over to the.
Right, so we have a lot of customers who have built IoT solutions on our platforms, both IoT Cloud and on Heroku. So New England Biolabs are over there with the Zively, with the Zively team, and they've built connected fridges. Emerson is one of our IoT Cloud customers who've built a uh, really cool thermostat, a connected thermostat with an experience. Lynx have built a connected grill, so a barbecue basically, which allows a, effectively a, um, a, a, a company that sells through distributors to have that direct connectivity with the end user through their mobile app. And what they've done is use the app as a way of connecting the grill. So if you want to grill a steak of a certain type, you can just go onto the mobile app and basically say, I want a medium rare steak. Here's a recipe. And you can then, they can then control your grill for you in terms of setting it up in the right way. So a way of creating engagement, a way of actually creating a very connected uh, experience using device data and, and, and mobile in this particular case. Right the way through to KUKA, who have basically turned robots into a service effectively. So you know, they've, ex they've, they've taken a device, a very complex device, and have enabled it to be part of a, uh, a new uh, business model. So putting it all together, we have a lot of choice with our platforms. Okay? So we can do a lot of things. And, and not everything has to be done from day one. We can progress this because our platforms work together. And you can introduce these over time. So on the top, top right-hand corner, we have all of our events from devices, from customers, from event streams. And it could be anything. It could be log files, right? It doesn't have to be sensors. So when we think about IoT, the mistakes people make is it, they automatically think it's some sort of Arduino or whatever it is. But you can get as much intelligence from customer data from a CRM system or your, or your internal systems and stream it into IoT Cloud and use it as an input. Once it comes into our platforms, you've got choice. So you're either going to build a solution in Heroku, so you can go the developer route that way, or you're going to push events directly into IoT Cloud Powered by Thunder, as Roberto shared you earlier. But all of our platforms are connected. And if you go the Heroku route, you have a bit of an advantage because you may have other things you're going to build alongside your connected application. So you may build a website. You may build a mobile backend as a service. You may build uh, validation routines, other applications which surround your IoT application. And then once you've got your, your architecture set up, you're good to go because we have the connectors back into our core platforms, force.com, which drive the back end, which drive the business processes directly from, um, you know, from the connected device right the way through to a workflow or an execution of anything you want to do. And we have that view that we can make IoT available to both developers and to business administrators or admins in general, low coders, because that's our vision for IoT. We need to open this up as a, a set of technologies that allows our customers to have a choice. So to summarize our talk track today, IoT requires a platform that drives user experience. So that Oh, it's always about your customer because ev behind every device ultimately is a customer, whether that's your employee, your partners, or your end customers. It's about people ultimately. And Salesforce is that platform because we have that customer data and we have all of the, the, the goodness that our platform provides. You have a choice whether you build with Heroku or whether you go down a IoT cloud route where you're configuring information. But it's not an either or. These are complementary platforms. You may build a solution in, in, in Heroku, but that data is about a customer, which you can then orchestrate within the wider IoT cloud context because you have, a lot more, you have a lot more event streams. But whatever you do, whether you go Heroku or IoT cloud, your partnerships are key. And the core partnership you will have is with, with your gateway or device providers because they provide that connectivity back into Salesforce. And they are the experts. And the final thought I want to leave you with is don't forget your on-prem and your existing back office, because you need to scale that out as well. Otherwise, it's not going to scale. It's not going to work. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the talk. Thank you.